Hello everyone and welcome to iReddit, bringing you your daily dose of the internet for Thursday, May 11th, 2017. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. Uh, Nathan, I think you might be in your webcam for your microphone all of a sudden. Oh no. Because you, okay. sound, you sound dreadful. All right, I'll, I'll work on that. Keep going. Okay. But please remember everyone, you can help support our show by going to patreon.com slash daily internet if you'd like to help support us financially then once again that's patreon.com slash daily internet nathan how are you doing today i mean why would you cut to me when i might still be having microphone pop problems because i could see that you were done fiddling with shit you don't know that uh i, I okay we didn't even test it uh, well i mean that was the test you're awful at this you're supposed to say test one action well that's if it's not already live <laughs> Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck it. We'll do it live. <laughs> oh, don't quote him. Don't quote Bill O'Reilly. That's not okay. Oh, 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 you're right. I can't poke. I can't jab at him, I guess. Well, I mean, you can jab at him. Just don't be part of him. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Am I like his Horcrux or something? I don't know. Maybe. I hope not. In that case, kill me, fam. I'm doing the world some solids. You just get rid of Bill O'Reilly. Well, I mean, do you think he's going to go on to do anything after being let go from Fox? No. You don't think so? He'll just languish in his money? Well, I mean, he might do podcasts, but like, otherwise, yeah, no. Oh, God. Don't let him do podcasts. Don't let him in on our, our world. Yeah. It's getting bigger than you'd think. Anyway, so how are you, though, aside from tech problems? Uh, I mean, I'm all right. Today was an interesting day. Why was it interesting? There's a there's a guy who tried to get into the domestic violence uh, bit of the courthouse over in, in Boney, right? Yeah, sure. The, the other courthouse? Yeah, he had purchased a toy... Um, a toy police officer's badge and tried to pass off as a state trooper so that, that he can get in without getting searched. That's that's pretty bad. Yeah. Was he just in, like, civilian clothes? I think so. Dude. Yeah, like, what, what's going... Like, what? wow. Uh, well, um, that doesn't work. Yeah, I know it doesn't. Oh, God, I'm so glad it doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah, wouldn't that be fucking terrifying? Yeah, yeah, it would. No, good good thing our security guards are, you know, have common sense, I mean. What, does that say Fisher-Price? <laughs> it's all shiny and glossy, it doesn't, it's not even metal. Yeah, what, let me see that. Dude, he got this out of a cardboard, uh, fucking cracker, cereal box. Yeah, Cracker Jacks. Dude, oh, dude, I had an addiction for Cracker Jacks for like a year and a half. While I worked at Bosco's. And then after that, I, I had an addiction to uh, white cheddar popcorn. Is it because you couldn't afford anything else? Yeah, and they were really delicious snacks for work. Yeah. My snacks for work right now is either the goddamn little Special K 100 calorie little delicious bars or fucking Fun Dip. And I'm not, I'm not even joking. I sit there at my desk and fucking, like a, like a four-year-old, scoop out sugar with a goddamn sugar stick and a nom on it. Congratulations. Yep, working on my diabetes. Yeah, no, that's spot on. That's how my grandpa got diabetes. My grandpa died from a lot of other things besides diabetes, though. My grandpa got, was a fucking got, champ. Got diabetes specifically from Fun Dip? Uh, well, kind of. He was, what, a, he what? was the kind of... He was the kind of man that would walk down to, to Fred Meyer's just so that he could buy three sodas and drink them all in the day and then finish the, by the end of the night by eating two bowls of ice cream. As well as assorted candy throughout the day. Uh, I used to... Um, if my comfort food used to be, which I have... Uh, luck luckily, my life has been good enough that I haven't needed a comfort food in, to this degree. My comfort food... Food used to be literally a glass of milk and a bowl of pure brown sugar that I would eat with a spoon. That's gross. Yep. You're fucking disgusting. I know. <laughs> I My comfort food's ice cream. I should probably be dead, but mm -hmm. whatever. 
Because there was a point where I was, like, seriously fighting depression. And I'm pretty sure my body wanted sugar because, you know, sugar, is, like, makes you hyper and shit. And that pseudo-happiness. And But there was a point where I was fighting depression so hard that I was eating, like, a small bowl of it every day. I, uh, I ate, or I, I, my comfort food's definitely ice cream, which is really unfortunate because I'm lactose intolerant. So it's more of a discomfort food. So, is it just, like, a matter of wanting to make yourself happy by torturing yourself? Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of a masochist. See, Kendall understands. Kendall in the chat room says they've done very similar things. What the fuck? My brother's comfort food used to be, uh, mayonnaise sandwiches. I used to, when I was really young, all the time, I would almost only exclusively eat mayonnaise and cheese sandwiches. That's kind of weird. They're really just, good. Like, just, just like, take a block of Colby Jack and slice it into thick or thin slices. Put it on some bread that has mayonnaise spread on it. Dude, super tasty. Dude, all right. So this is going to sound kind of dirty, but have you ever made mayonnaise? No. No, it I is haven't. one of the most aggravating processes I've ever had to do. It's like vinegar, water, lard, and eggs, and you just whip the shit out of it, right? Well, it's like, it's oil and egg whites. Sure, yeah. But they don't mix naturally. So you have to drip the oil into the egg whites as you're beating them to hopefully get them to emulsify, and you're hoping to God it doesn't split. Uh, Kendall in the chat room says they remember when they were super young dipping bologna sandwiches in Kool-Aid. That's... That one's, um, mm, I think that one might win. That's pretty fucking weird. Bologna sand- wait, what, now I need to know, Kendall, was there any condiments on the bologna sandwich? Because, like, that that could drastically change things. Like, is there mustard on it? And you're dipping it. What type of Kool-Aid? Was it, like, the straight up, oh, yeah, cherry red? Or, or, or are we going, like, with, you know, grape Kool-Aid? Or... Uh, I'm concerned uh, now. I need more uh, details. Mayonnaise? 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 I don't even know if I've had mayonnaise and bologna. I don't know if that's a sandwich I've eaten. Dude, no, it, it, it's, a, it's a definite thing. Mayonnaise and bologna is a legit thing. You put, it, it's a it's standard, uh, it's, it's your fucking cheese sandwiches except with a slice of, uh, or three of bologna. All flavor Kool-Aids. All right, you're a little, you're a little. So wait, was it was it like a cup of Kool-Aid or was it like a bowl? Like, did you pour? It, a bowl? It's like a punch bowl of Kool-Aid. <laughs> no, no, and she's just throwing sandwiches in this no, bitch no, to have no, them no, soak no. up. This is like this is like even poorer version of tomato soup with grilled cheese. You got a bowl of red Kool-Aid, so it kind of looks like tomato soup, and you got a mayonnaise and bologna sandwich that you're dipping into. I'm getting under. <laughs> shaking of the head from jennifer off to my left <laughs> i would i would make mac and cheese but we would put um onion slivers and hot dog in it got drank yeah. shit was delicious so should we actually talk about news now no well, this is a culinary podcast culinary oh dude that sounds either really awesome or really difficult or both uh, can can you imagine? All right, we have to we have to taste this food now. Yeah, just just it, just, just twenty minutes of mastication. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you, it has a very definite salty taste to it. Salty like your tears seeing me eat this delicious food. Except it's a podcast, so most for the most part, they probably wouldn't see you eating the food. Well, I mean, they could if they watched the the stream. Yeah, but I mean, whatever. And uh, anyway, I'm, I'm done here. Let's move, let's actually talk about things now. Oh, I missed the button. Ten. I suck. Trump's deputy attorney general reportedly threatened to quit after being painted as the mastermind behind Comey's firing. This was submitted by I'm the captain now to our politics. So, yeah, the, what it looked like by the reports and the letters that were all attached to James Comey's termination letter, the deputy attorney general wrote a letter to the attorney general who took that what letter. What was his name? Rod, Rod something? Rod, Rodenstein? Robinstein? Rod, Rod, Rod Roddenberry? No, Rod, no, no. no. <laughs> you leave Gene Roddenberry out of this. I'll have you know, I have, uh, sitting on my floor right now, Farscape Season, season 3 Collection 1. Gene Roddenberry's the fucking jam. Uh, his name is Rod Rosenstein. So, Rodenstein, I think, is what we're going to call him from now on. 
Wait, this is Roddenberry, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't fucking know. I, anyway, so Deputy Attorney General, Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, or Rod, yeah, or Rodenstein, as we were going to call him forthwith, um, he sent the letter to the Attorney General Jeff Sessions, who then sent a letter to the to the President Donald Trump, who's then like, you know what? I don't like that Comey guy. Get the fuck out. But because of that chain, everyone is saying, hey, Rosenstein, it's your fault. And he's like, fuck you. I just said I didn't like the guy. They're the ones that actually fired him. So uh, no one actually wants to take not. responsibility for it, I guess, huh, because never mind. I thought this was a Gene Rondre thing. I guess it's not. Too bad. So I, I look really fucking dumb. I swear to God, it was. Whatever. Either way, yeah, the deputy general, attorney general, doesn't want people pointing at him for James Comey being fired. But you're a part of it. It's partially your fault, even if Trump made the actual action. Oh, uh, okay. It was Farscape Andromeda, not regular Farscape. He's, he's not even here. All right, we're, we're just going to move on to the next one. Nine. Living man declared dead by IRS for 29 years has been resurrected by U.S. <laughs> Senator. I'm sorry I didn't listen to any of number 10, all right? <laughs> I was on a mission, and it was it was Farscape Andromeda. That's nice. <laughs> That's good for you. <laughs> oh god. Uh, this is submitted by in Intertius to R, not the Onion. What was number ten about? <laughs> Doesn't matter oh, okay, now. Okay, never mind. No, 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 I got it. I got it. Okay, so a U.S. senator from Minnesota has helped a man fix his problems that he's been having with the IRS. When this guy was four years old, he was declared dead. Not not by a doctor. By the IRS. Just added to the this is the dead people list. When he was four. And so he's been having a horrible time all of his life with his taxes. Because he's been paying taxes and filing his taxes. But a lot of the times he like never hears from the IRS. Or doesn't get a tax return. Or like only gets half of one. Because apparently you pay half of a return to a dead person. What? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's the whole Hey, thing. yo, fam, I've been dead inside for years. Can I get this? <laughs> so he finally, like, took the step and started, like, actually trying to dig in and fix it. And, well, it looks like the IRS owes him uh, several thousand dollars in the ballpark of, like, 20 grand. And uh, he's, he's the IRS recognizes him as a living person now. That's cool. Yeah. That's really exciting, it's but like, that's really weird. It's like that's how it should be. Fuck. This guy's been dead for 29 years. He's like, what, 33? Uh, yeah. Shit. Straight out of the mummy or some shit. I'm kind of excited for the new mummy movie. Yeah? You like that yeah. Tom Cruise? No, I don't like the Tom Cruise. I just really like, like shitty monster movies. Yeah, but but Brendan Fraser, man. I know it was so good. The original Mummy and Mummy Returns was fucking amazing. <laughs> well, not the original because technically they're not the original. Yeah, I, I understood what you meant. The Brendan Fraser ones, back which when, a lot of people assume are the originals. Back when Brendan Fraser was the man. Mm -hmm. But now they're redoing it so that they can introduce it to the Mar to the not Marvel to the movie. Uh, to the fucking Universal Pictures horror movie monster universe, and they're gonna have it all in the same universe. George, George, George of the Jungle, strong as he can be. I mean, soon they're probably gonna even put uh, that chick in like Mortal Kombat. Cool, I'm down. Because like they already got like Leatherface and everything else. Eight. Pakistan people who smoke or eat openly during Ramadan face three month imprisonment. This was submitted by People Pants to Our World News. So yeah, don't you, it's it's the month of fasting. How are you? How are you supposed to fast? Oh, okay, never mind. For an entire month. Yeah, so it's a month of that you're supposed to not eat publicly, and you're supposed to fast at home, so you eat very little. And the Senate Senate Standing Committee on Religious Affairs has unanimously approved a bill that says that if you are caught smoking or eating in public, you will be imprisoned for three months as well as find anywhere from 500 to 25,000 whatever RS stands for and if you are a establishment like a lot of this is referring to cinemas um, or hotels or anything like that if you are holding events that have people eating in public you can be fined up to 500,000 of their currency yeah fuck that yeah I can understand the smoking, but not the eating. Like, people need to eat to survive. Well, you're supposed to eat very little, and you're supposed to eat at home. Oh, stupid. 
And then after that month is over, you gorge yourself. Oh, that's fine. I like gorging myself. I mean, it's not that much different than your life now. Just you fast. That's not fair. I don't get a choice. You fast for two weeks, gorge yourself for two days, fast for two weeks, gorge yourself for two days. I don't, I don't get a choice, Michael. I know. (laughs) I mean, spread, spread the gorging out over those two weeks and then you'll just, you know, just eat very little for two weeks instead of nothing. Apparently the Japanese have a saying where you're supposed to eat until you're 80% full. Yeah. Why? I mean, yeah. What about it? Uh, well, I mean, I, when I do like binge, it's like 300% full. Yeah. The idea is that your body has a delayed response and telling you how much food is in your stomach. So if you stop when you're 80% full, you'll become a hundred percent full over the next like 15, 20 minutes. Especially when the rice that you've been eating, cause you have, you're eating a traditional Japanese, uh, um, diet is like expanding in your stomach. Exactly. Bread. Lots of bread. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Seven. New Amazon building in Seattle will include a homeless shelter. This was submitted by HD Walrus to our uplifting news. So Amazon was already supporting a homeless shelter. It's called Mary's Place. It was a, Mary's Place was in a basically a uh, a old building that Amazon owned. Amazon and it was like a an old uh, what the fuck are those called? Um, a travel lodge. That's the word I'm looking for. And they're knocking that travel lodge down to build a new corporate building. But half of that corporate building they're going to dedicate to Mary's Place, and which is going to house roughly around uh, 65 families or 200 people. Jesus. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, some people are calling Amazon out on this because Amazon has reportedly not done anything about the homeless problem in Seattle where there's lots of other companies that have whether it's building buildings I mean we talked uh, what a couple weeks ago about how the co-founder of Microsoft is donating 30 million dollars to help build homeless establishments in Seattle and a lot of people are saying that it's the corporations like Amazon and Microsoft's fault that there is such a homeless problem in Seattle because they're building their corporate buildings there, which increases the, and which, the and, property. Right. And they pay their their employees well, which drives up property prices, which makes it more difficult for people to get a house. Mm-hmm. Amazon has been getting flack for not helping out with this problem that they have supposedly contributed to. And so this is their first step in actually contributing to it. Oh, that's great. That's great. I, I, I like this. Yeah. I was thinking about becoming a homeless person in in Seattle for a while. Yeah, just because? Yeah, it seemed like something that I would enjoy doing. Yeah. I mean, you could join all the people that are homeless in Hawaii. Um, no. Why not? Because they have bigger spiders there than they do in Seattle. They also, uh, do they have coconuts there? Yeah, lots of them. Yeah? So, I mean... Not only do you have to worry about coconuts falling and killing you, but you just have to worry about consuming coconut and it, and, uh, and it killing you. Did you know that coconuts floated over, like, oceans? And that's why they're everywhere? Is because they stemmed originally from somewhere in, like, Southeast Asia? It, isn't there a similar story for pineapples? I don't know. I think so. Because I, I think pineapples came from, like, Japan or some shit, and they just floated over. It's one of the best things to come out of Japan. Put that shit on pizza. There, uh, yeah. I, I like pineapple on pizza. Why are you flipping me off right now? No, I'm flipping off everybody who doesn't like pineapple. Oh, okay, I can join in that. Yeah. Anyway, um, but I'm, I'm amazed that they made it, like, and, like, made it in a healthy enough state to grow. Also, there's yeah. a lot of really good things that came out of Japan besides fucking pineapples. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think pineapple is probably one of the best damn things on the whole damn planet. Is that so? Oh, easily. Really? Yeah, it's... It's so delicious. It's like, it's acidic, like a citrus, but it's got this really sweet, tangy flavor to it. The flesh of it's really delicious, and you can eat it in circles, which is amazing. You can put it on ham, and it fucking tastes beautiful. You can put it on pizza, and fuck everyone who says you can't. Goddamn, it's one of the best fruit on the face of the planet, next to fucking oranges. Like, oranges, pineapple, right up there. Banana. Yeah. Yeah. Lemon, lime, even. I like both of those a lot. Are we just going to name all the fucking fruit? No. I, I'm naming uh, almost strictly uh, acidic citrus things, if you didn't notice. I did notice. Yeah. And yes, it is named horribly. should not be named pineapple. It should be named ananas. 
like so that's where it's named almost literally everywhere else. Yeah, but America, we make our own rules. Yeah. Six FBI searching Annapolis fundraiser and consulting firm. This is submitted by Trump peed on me to our politics. God damn it, people. Holy shit with the names. That's All right. Good. Anyway, FBI agents have executed a search warrant on Thursday at an office of a GOP fundraising and consulting firm in Annapolis. Um, this particular GOP consulting and fundraising firm has ties to uh, Donald Trump's former campaign manager. Um, so this is just part of their investigation. They haven't actually said specifically what they're looking for. The other people in the building or down the street that are neighbors to this fundraising and consulting firm have not. They, they asked, but the FBI has not given any information what they're actually searching for. Um, and I'm, who knows? Maybe they might not. I, I kind of hope they don't find anything, honestly. But it does, I mean, this is part of their whole investigation into the, like, if, if it's not part of searching for the Russian ties, I will be baffled, especially because this firm is under Paul Manafort. We talked about him a couple of weeks ago. He's the guy that had, took a whole bunch of money from some dude in Ukraine that was actually through Russia. Okay, never mind. I kind of hope they, that they get caught then. Well, I mean, if there isn't, like, like we said, you know, yesterday, there's two outcomes to this. Either they did do something wrong, and God damn it, that sucks, but at least we caught them, or they didn't do anything wrong, and that's, that, that's in, in some ways, the better result. In, in some ways, depending on how you look at it. Like, I would like to know that, you know, they're not double-crossing, backstabbing, skeevy-ass fucking shitbags. They're just regular shitbags? Yeah, they're just normal douchers. It's harder to get them out of office. Well, that's just because of the way that the government is. Sure. Five. A cold calling firm has been fined a record 400,000 pounds by the Information Commissioner's Office for making almost 100 million nuisance calls. This was submitted by Ninja Disco Jesus to Our World News. Did you know that it is illegal, no, I didn't. illegal to essentially be a telemarketer anymore? Really? Almost, for the most part. Damn, that's crazy. Yep, it is a. I mean, there are some ways around it, in some ways that it is acceptable, especially if there there's ways to like get people to unknowingly say it's okay to call them and stuff like that. But for the most part, you're not allowed to spam people with phone calls about random bullshit anymore. And there was this firm whose entire assets have now been liquidated, which means it's very difficult to actually find them since the company doesn't exist. But they instituted legislation that says they're just allowed to move the fine over to the director of the company, regardless of whether the company still exists or not. And this particular company made over 100 million illegal calls that they knew were illegal and did them anyway. Jesus Christ. 400,000 pounds. That's insane. For phone calls. That check is fat. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's good. It's good. It's one of those things that just I don't, nobody likes. Even the director of the, the dude who owned the company, which was called Kerr Boom Communications, he said, yeah, um, cold calling is annoying, but it's a part of life and it's necessary. No, it's not. No, no, it's, it's not. not it's not necess necessary. Blah. English. I don't enjoy oh, cold shit. calls, but that doesn't make Take them two. illegal. Action. No, it's not necessary whatsoever. It's like mosquitoes. Yeah, well, well, yeah. You can do away with them. I wish we would. Eventually. Yeah, we'll once get we, Once we get that science 100% down. Our, we, we have it, like, what, like 97% down right now? Yeah, we're, we're really close. We're, like, we're on oh, the breakthrough. Are we sure we can kill these without there being a but problem? But at the same time, at the same time, we're like, oh, should we really wipe out an entire species of animal? But at the same time, it's the most chaotic, evil animal on the face of the planet. It spreads diseases. I mean, but at the same time, it's so dumb, it doesn't understand that it spreads diseases. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, God, the moral dilemma. It's getting close to that whole playing God thing, aren't we? Exactly. We're just wiping out an entire species of animal, even though they are the, the worst things. Nothing on the planet likes them. Like... Reindeer and other, like, moose will run themselves to death trying to escape mosquito clouds. Yep. It's crazy. We get we get them mad crazy sometimes. Last year was fucking insane for mosquitoes. We'll see how this year goes. Four. Uh, the drug whisperer. Some drivers are getting arrested for driving stoned, even when their drug test came back clean. 
Yep. This was submitted by a worm dude to our news. So, Georgia State Troopers have received special training. No, I mean, not state troopers, Georgia police officers. Oh, more than 250 officers have re received special drug recognition training, which is supposed to allow them to identify if someone is under the effects of marijuana without a drug test. What do you do? Do you wave a bag of Doritos in front of their face and see what they do? There's not really any info on that, on what they're supposed to do, but they are arresting people because, like, people that are, like... Some dude barely drifted over the line, got pulled over, cop put a breathalyzer on him, he didn't have alcohol, and the cop was like, you know what, I think you're under the effects of marijuana. And he's like, no, 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 I'm not, I actually don't smoke marijuana at all. And he goes, you're, you're exhibiting a lot of the signs of people who smoke marijuana. And he's like, I, I swear to you, dude, that's, I don't. That's nice. I don't, I don't smoke marijuana, like, you, you, got, you got to do a drug test? Well, I don't have a drug test on me, so I'm going to have to arrest you and take you into the station. Uh, What? And they arrest them and charge them with a DUI that they then have to fight to get removed by proving that they do not do marijuana. And here's the thing is that the the police department is arguing that the w tests that come back that say that they d aren't on marijuana, that the cops are trained to detect marijuana even if it is in the smallest amount of strains. So if you haven't smoked marijuana in, in three weeks, they're saying, well, you're still under the effects of it. Even if no. you're- No. No, you are not. Even if your blood is completely clean, even if you piss no. clean, you could still be under the effects of marijuana. No, that is not how marijuana works. Where is this place? Georgia. Of course they would. O you over backwards fucks. Hundreds of arrests in the last year. That's not how that works at all. Oh, God. Why are they doing these things to our people? Yep. And here's the other thing is that during the investigation into this, so for the drug recognition uh, training they've been giving, they're supposed to go through a 12-step process to validate that suspicion. None of them do it. They just arrest them and straight up take them to jail with a DUI charge and then continue on with their day. Oh, fuck that. I'd be pressing so many fucking... I would, I would have so many goddamn lawsuits against every single one of those goddamn police departments. Here, well, here's the funny thing. Those officers that are doing this are getting rewarded for how many arrests they've conducted. No, no, we're fucking... Uh, lawsuit time. Everyone needs to fucking suit up. Yep. That's fucked up. Don't go to Georgia. If you like to drive semi-erratically. Oh, just, just, just actually, just don't go to Georgia, alright? Yeah, I mean, uh, sorry Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta, you cool and all, but the, the rest... Actually, no, let's just... Uh, no. Three. Sessions violated two recusal oaths in Comey firing. This is submitted by Undead Fungus. To our politics. So yeah, Jeff Sessions, Attorney General for the United States of America, he had previously recused himself on the Hillary email scandal, and the he refused recused himself from the full investigation of the Russian ties to Trump's campaign. He'd recused himself, said I can't have anything to do with either of those for reasons X, Y, and Z. But in the letters that led to James Comey being terminated, he spoke about. Both of those. Mm. As reasons why that James Comey was no longer fit to lead the borough. Bureau. Whatever. Borough. Sure. Bruh. 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 Oh, God. But, yeah. Why? Because these people don't give a shit. It just, it, it needs, needs more common sense. Like, they're literally playing this weird-ass game of, like, Monopoly squished alongside Settlers of Catan. Oh, God. 
And they're like, plus Risk. It's like Settlers of Catan and Risk and Monopoly squished into one shitty ass board game. And Trump's over there with a bunch of sheep looking at Putin who's got a whole bunch of troops stacked up on friggin' Vladivostok. And he's like, I'll trade you six sheep for five wheat. Meanwhile, fucking Sessions is like, damn it, go to jail again. Fuck, do not pass go, do not collect $200. This board game sounds terrible. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, this board game sounds fucking awful. It's the worst board game. That's too many board... Actually, instead of Monopoly, you should do the game that's the reverse of Monopoly. Which is? Go for broke. Oh, okay. You start with a set amount of money, and your goal is to spend all your money. Well. Yeah, God damn it. Yep. Anyway, okay. Two. HP is shipping audio drivers with a built-in keylogger. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. I was responding to my mom in chat. Good job. Way to go. Uh, she's saying good night. Uh, this was submitted by Golden430 to our technology. I love my mama, all right? That, that's acceptable. So the uh, the HP, the, there are several models that are being shipped out that they're supposed to have a key logger that says when a specific button is pressed, it's a special function button because they want to know how much it's being used. But they didn't do a very good job, and instead it just tracks everything that you type in, all of it, every single key, and saves it in a log. No! <laughs> what? And HP was like, oh, oops. Oh! <laughs> Why is this entire podcast just stab Nathan in the fucking uh, everything? Yeah, this is their response. HP is committed to the security of its customers, and we are aware of an issue on select HP PCs. We have identified a fix, and we'll make it available to our customers soon. Why? Why is this a thing? Yep. Is this like is this like the podcast for Are Not the Onion? I guess I don't know. It just makes just sadness all around in every direction. Exactly, nothing but sadness. Ah, oh, jeez, it's actually like really warm in my house. I don't like it. Make it, Nathan. Make it stop. I don't know if it worked. Oh, neither do I. But I feel kind of sweaty, and I don't like it. One. FBI to continue Trump Russia probe but will not update White House, says the acting FBI director. This was submitted by Abdullah to our politics. Uh, there's not a whole lot. Of Good on him. Yeah. They he... put. All right. So this is what this is what that guy's doing. He's like, hey, you fired Comey. Everyone loved Comey. I'm gonna take my balls in honor of Comey. I'm gonna take these balls. And I'm gonna put them on this fucking table. And there's nothing you can fucking do about it. Yep, he said that it, it is unfortunate that they lost Comey, but that does not undermine the efforts of the other men and women that work for the Federal Bureau of Investigations. They are going to continue full sail, you know, all, all rudders full, straight towards on the Trump-Russia investigation, and they'll update the White House maybe when they feel like it or not at all because they don't need to. Yeah, they, like, good on them. Fuck them. It's like, no, we don't need to tell you shit. We're just going to do our jobs and you can worry about you. Yeah. We'll find out if you guys are legit or not. We will investigate. We will tell you the things. So, yeah, I mean, power to him. I mean... I hope that they actually do continue on well with it. I mean, they said that they've already um, encumbered the funds and that they have a lot of funding put forward towards the uh, the Trump-Russia probe. Whatever comes out of that, whatever. But at least we know that just because that Comey is removed that they're not going to change course. Okay. Yeah, no, that's good. I like that. Good. I thought you would. Good, good on them. Congratulations. I'm going to put a little uh, thankful, so a little, little flower. <laughs> Nathan, what'd you care about in the last twenty-four hours? All right, do you know you, you know the winds of winter, right? Uh, that's the that's supposed to be the next Game of Thrones book, right? Yeah. Did you know that George R. R. Martin is uh is producing a new Game of Thrones story? Uh, it's one of the spinoffs, right? It's kind of it's uh it's gonna be a short story. He took time out of writing the winds of winter, which is like five years late. Uh. To, uh, to write a short story, uh, to be fair, mostly compiled out of the World Book, which came out during the time period that The Winds of Winter is supposed to come out. 
um, about uh, the short story is going to be in a book called The Book of Swords, and it's going to be about um, Aegon the Conqueror's sons. Is The Book of Swords purely Game of Thrones stuff? Uh, no, 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 no. It's one story. Oh, okay. Um, it and and it's going to be about Aegon the Conqueror's sons. Aegon the Conqueror is the one who uh, conquered Westeros and united all of the Seven Kingdoms into one. Sure. Right. Um, it's going to be about his sons, Magor the Cruel and Anus Targaryen. <laughs> that can't be their name. A- Anis Targaryen. A E N Y S. Um, I I don't know. I don't need to know. I'm just. A- Anis Targaryen the first. Sure, go with that. A, a- Anus Anus Targaryen. No, no, stop it. Anus the first of his name. Nope. King of the Andals, no. the Roinar, and the first no. men. Lord of the Seven Kingdoms, protector of the realm. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, is Winds of Winter ever gonna be a thing? Ever? I hope so. I'm sorry, there's this fan picture of King a- Aenys. And is it just a fucking butt in a helmet? No, he's sitting there on his throne, but he's got his fingers up to his nose. <laughs> That's terrible. And I'm like, no, stop it, please. You're not supposed to do that. That's how you get pink eye. So, we're already at we're already at the end of the show. We're only at 36 minutes, so we're going to play a little game, Nathan. Yeah gonna play a quick game of uh would you rather okay uh okay okay yeah be- yeah go be- because uh so my seven-year-old daughter bianca she was asking us a whole bunch of would you rather questions uh over dinner right yeah and it was a bunch like a bunch of like you know would you rather be this person or this person so like nathan would you rather would you rather be um you know like the joker or the penguin from batman the joker okay it'd be fun yeah so we're gonna go back and forth on these um, and I'm going to ask you some of the ones. So he- here's one that I-, I-, I paused for a moment and went, hmm. Would you rather be Darth Maul or the Emperor? Darth Maul. Yeah, why? I get my legs cut off. I don't have to worry about sex ever again. I can focus on totally the dark side. Does the dark side even worry about that? I don't know. I just there's, Sex usually clouds your mind. There's so little, like, sex anything in Star Wars. I know. It's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it's for tr- children. Yeah. Don't ruin that. Disney. Oh, it's, it's owned by Disney, so they'll never ruin it. Yeah. Like, the closest... Well, I don't, I don't know about that. What Examples? Um, I have none at the moment. You just wait. Okay, I was like, they got to the weird, creepy, I touch your hand thing between uh, Black Widow and the Hulk. Yeah. Um, that that would have been a fucked up sex scene. <laughs> it, the the road to El Dorado isn't Disney, right? That's I don't I don't actually know. I because I always get it fucking confused. Uh, the road to El Dorado. That's there. It is. It was no. It is not a Disney film. Okay, because that had some suggestive content in it. Can you think of any Disney films in any? Any way that uh, has sexually suggestive content in it? I mean, I guess Rapunzel and Tangled friggin' tied friggin' Flynn up like a friggin' toy. Um, there is the dick on the Little Mermaid. Um, that's VHS. so different. Dude, I have that VHS somewhere over there. Uh, m- the other white mic in the chat room says Mulan. Um, I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, Shen, Shen was was very uh, was it? I forget his name, but he was Shen Shen. I don't remember. Anyway, sexually, but he suggestive. was to- he was totally like, am I gay? I'm totally gay. I I don't know. I don't think that's quite sexually suggestive so much as like, like specifically looking for things that are sexually suggestive in Disney. Hmm. Or, or Pixar, or, you know, Marvel, or Star Wars. Disney properties, essentially. Um, I mean, the, I mean, I guess in some ways they allude to it. I mean, friggin' Donkey and the Dragon had little baby dragons. That's dra- DreamWorks. Oh, damn. I thought that was Pixar. No, that's DreamWorks. Shit, okay. Oh, Kendall's got it. Yeah, the very, very suggestive stuff in Lion King. 
Oh yeah, the fucking the one with the, the sexual lion eyes. Yeah, fuck, fuck. Take me, Simba. Take me right now. Oh god, no. You're basically my cousin half brother, but take me. Why? Be I don't know. Why? Remember who you are. Oh, wait, I should remember that I'm related to this person, right? Yeah, no, no, DreamWorks doesn't give a fuck about being sexually suggested. They're like, yeah, we put the dick in the ass. I, I don't, I don't think they do. I don't think that's what they do. No, Nathan. You, you're right, you're right. You put the balls in the ass and the dick in the pussy. Na Na wow, all right. Oh, wow, okay. So, uh, check for explicit content on this episode. Goddamn. <laughs> That was a throwback to a very, very old meme that circulated 4chan in, like, 2007. That doesn't need to be recirculated. Um, I don't know. I, I thought it was hilarious, but, you know, whatever. Okay, so, uh, can you, can, still on the... <laughs> the name of the episode's Probing Deep. It is. It totally is. <laughs> Balls in the ass. God damn it. <laughs> okay, so, back on this thing of trying to find sexually suggestive Disney, you got anything? Can you think of anything else? Um... What is no no I mean there's a whole bunch of like unconsensual things mostly involving sleeping princesses okay so there's gotta be uh there's the gay couple in Frozen sure okay but it's still not sexually suggestive like that's um, there's pulling the beads out of that rat's ass <laughs> it's, it's off of his tail <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, there's, there's in Toy Story. There's, there's the uh, the fishing rod with the uh, the the very nice legs, and it's a hooker. There's also a little bit of of illusion, I guess, between Woody and Bo Peep. Is Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Um, fucking Disney. I don't know. What's who, look up who did Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Um, yes, Kendall. Hunchback of Notre Dame was a Disney movie. Uh, a Bug's Life? Hey, cutie, want to pollinate with the real bug? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Aladdin? Hercules? The centaur was trying to rape Meg? Okay, I... so I guess rape isn't sex. Well, yeah, okay. Um... Who framed Roger Rabbit? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure that's Warner Brothers, isn't it? I don't know. Who framed Roger Rabbit? I guess I guess snozberries taste like snozberries should count too, right? Um is Willy Wonka a Disney movie? Uh I don't think I don't, so. I don't know. Uh, oh no, this is just children's films. I was like, are we just gonna keep on looking up who made these things? No, no, no. Uh, okay. no. Who Framed Roger Rabbit is not Disney. Okay. That one was uncomfortably sexual. Toy Story Triple X, starring Woody and Buzz. Alright, anyway. So, uh, Nathan. Would you what? Would you rather be Master Yoda or Luke Skywalker? It's so not fair, because I want to be Mark Hamill. Hamill? Hamill. Yeah, Hamill. Yeah, Hamill. I will fucking fight you. <laughs> Do it. Fight me. I will harvest your fucking organs. Dude, I'm ready. God damn it. He starts um, undoing his pants. What the hell's wrong with you? I'm going to say... I'm going to say Luke Skywalker, because Yoda didn't realize what he was doing, and he had to exile himself. Oh, I mean, He's like, I'm putting myself in timeout. Didn't Luke technically exile himself, too, after failing and having Kylo kill everybody? Okay, yeah. Like, here's I the thing, is basically it. you're choosing, do, do you want to be a human? I keep, for, or... I keep forgetting that all, all of Disney lore is now shaken up, or, or all of Star Wars lore is shaken up because of Disney. Yeah. I hate it. Oh, no, I totally understand. There's a lot of really good shit that's now not canon. All right, your turn. Um, would, y would you rather, would you rather be, would you rather be Mr. Fantastic or Plastic Man? Uh, Mr. Fantastic. Because right. he's a fucking super genius. 
that's very fair. Reed Richards is pretty cool, even though fan- the Fantastic Four is actually complete ass. Oh, I so know, but the bad guys. I'm also thinking of Reed Richards from like the comics because. Yeah, I mean he's super smart. He's in the Illuminati and everything, but. Yeah, what is it actually fucking... called? It's not called the Illuminati, isn't it? No, they have a they have a in, in Secret Avengers. It was called the Illuminati. Oh, okay. I think it was Secret Avengers. Um, hang on one second. Do you got another one? Um, yeah. Would you rather be uh, Ash Ketchum stuck being ten for the rest of your life, or Ty from Digimon? You and son actually of a beat? bitch! You piece of shit! I literally just looked up what Ty's last name was so that I could ask this to you. Oh, uh, what was his last name? Com- com- fuck, dude. I- I'm-, I'm shitty at this. Kamiya? Kamiya? K-A-M-I-Y-A. Kamiya. I don't know. Kamiya? Sure. Ka- that's probably- so It's Taichi Yagami in Japan. Sure, I'll go with that. Anyway. Well, I mean, it's also Tai Chi. So would I rather be Tai or Ash? Yeah, Tai or Ash. Did, did you add anything on to Tai's thing besides Ash being 10 forever or Tai what? You get to age normally. But, I mean, you get you get your, you your either get your Pokemon, which, I mean, Ash has a lot of compared to Agumon. But, you know, fucking Agumon's the goddamn jam. I don't know. I think I would want to be Tai because Digimon is in my opinion, a lot more interactive world than Pokemon is. Sure. Like, I really like Pokemon, but Digimon's the shit. Sure. They can talk. Yeah. They can tell me that they're ashamed of me. Okay. Um, would you rather be... Fuck. Uh... G- give me, like, some... Throw me some houses from Game of Thrones. I... Oh, okay, would you uh, rather be the Starks or the Targaryens? Because those are the only two names I can think of. Okay. <laughs> I think I would rather be the Targaryens. Yeah, because all for the most part they live. They're fucking no. What no? There's only like one Targaryen right now. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um. Well, okay. There's like a small handful, like three or four. Um. I would probably want to be a Targaryen because they tend to be uh, hot-headed dickheads who fucking really like dragons and get to fly around on dragons and shit. As opposed to Starks who are like the cold Northmen who, who, are, who are really fucking cool because they have their Northmen like honor and pride and they don't need to be knights. But like really don't want to be around ice spiders. Would you rather be Attila the Hun or Genghis Khan? Genghis Khan. Yeah? Yeah. Would you rather be Vlad the Imperiler or uh, uh, the friggin' uh, Ivan the Terrible? Vlad the Impaler. Yeah? Yeah. Because marshmallows? Yeah. <laughs> well, these are fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your turn. Um, Would you rather be Captain Kirk or Captain Picard? I don't know, because right now you're fucking from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> <laughs> Solar flare. Yeah. Uh, Cap- Captain Kirk or Captain Picard? Uh, wait. Am- maybe I'm not understanding because isn't Picard Captain Kirk? No. No. You insolent pleb. I sorry. I I do not. I've not watched Star Trek. Was <sighs> he called Captain Picard when he was the fucking captain of the Enterprise? No, Captain Picard was a separate captain. He was the captain on on Enterprise. Really? Was he played by... No, no, he was the captain on Next Generation. Okay. I'm sorry. Sure. Um, I, I know nothing about Picard. Was he cool? Here's the fucking jam! Check it out! I'm Captain Picard! <laughs> anyway, uh... uh Kendall, Kendall's right. Picard has her heart. Picard has my heart. Okay, I'll, I guess I'll be Picard, because Kirk, for the most part, is, like, an, an overexcited idiot. Yeah, you're that, not wrong. That normally does nothing but get his team into trouble, because he yeah. fucking makes bad decisions. Sure. Would you rather be a Plusle or a Minum? I'd be a Minum. Why? Because you're so negative? Yeah. And blue's better color. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. Um, all right. What else could I think of? Would you r- rather be 
Saitama or uh, or Goku? Uh, <laughs> I would rather be Goku because Saitama literally is like, I'm so fucking strong. I'm super depressed all the time, and I don't want I don't want to be me except not except stronger. Oh, here's a shitty comparison. What's the main character's name from Attack on Titan that I don't know? Aaron Yeager. Would you rather be Aaron Yeager or fucking Claire from Claymore? Uh, Claire. Yeah? Why? Just because you're hot? Yeah. Yeah? Even though I really hate... I actually really hate the art style for Claymore. Really? Why is that? Yeah. I don't know. It's just the way they drew their bodies, I'm not a huge fan of. Okay. Um, well. okay. Uh, would you rather be, um... Would you rather be... Guts or That's shitty. Z or Zack from Final Fantasy VII. Oh, God. I'm going to go with Zack. I'm going to go with Zack because Zack's a fucking badass and he stays a happy chipper fuck all the way to the very end. Even when he's dying, he dies with a goddamn smile on his face. Where Guts after about like chapter 300 is just non-stop depression and dread to everyone. It just brings everyone down around him. So like, yeah, I'll go with Zack. Here's one for you. Would rather be Donald Trump or Vladimir Putin? Vladimir Putin. Why? Because... He forces people to like him. He's not as rich, though. It doesn't matter. I can give two shits about that. I'm a fucking mob boss, essentially. <laughs> run a country. All right. I don't like to get peed on. Um, would you rather be Aristotle or Socrates? Ooh. Can I substitute both of them? For who? Nietzsche? No. Pythagorean? Sure. Alright, your turn. We, 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 still, we still got about eight minutes to burn. Would you rather be... Oh, fuck. Um, let's see. Would you rather be Paul Atreides or, or Luke Skywalker? I don't know who the first one is. Aw, oh, you you haven't watched Dune or anything? No, no, I haven't. Never mind. That's a. I'll go with Skywalker, I guess. You know, I yeah. don't want to be Luke. Yeah, that makes me kind of sad. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm okay. Out. Uh, would you rather be Carlos Mencia or Amy Schumer? Fuck, I'm gonna have to go with Mencia. Like. Yeah, at least he's not relevant anymore. Yeah, and I mean, there was still at least some group of people that liked him. And I mean, he wasn't compared to being, like, a washed-up whale all the damn time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, I mean, people were like, damn it, Mencia, you need to stop stealing people's jokes. And he was like, yeah, you right, whatever, I'm already rich. Where Amy Schumer's like, I stole everyone jokes, my own jokes aren't funny, and I'm an ugly bitch. Everyone hates me! Yay! Okay, would you rather be a bottlenose dolphin or a blue ringed octopus? Uh, oh, da damn, damn. I, I thought that was going to be real easy and then you made it complicated. Yeah. Because I was like, oh man, the dolphin's probably the choice. And then you're like, no, I'm going to give you this other awesome sea creature. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I think I'll go with the uh, the octopus though. All right. Would you rather be Michael Schwann or Kirsten Baird on her motherfucking birthday? Is it her birthday? Yeah. Happy birthday, Kirsten. Say that real matter of factly. Yeah. All right. The question still stands. Uh, Michael Schwann. I like being me. Oh, that's weird. No one likes being you. Well, that's fine because I'm me. <laughs> You don't have to like being me. I'm already busy being me. You be busy being you. You self-deprecating oh God, I don't want to do bitch. that either. I know. Why, would... <laughs> Why are you torturing me this way? <laughs> uh, yeah, because I can. Um, let's see. Would you rather be Agumon or Pikachu? Agumon? He can fucking talk. And he's got pepper fire. And he can turn into motherfucking War Greymon. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Pikachu never even turns into Raichu. <laughs> Raichu at best is like Met here. He's like all right in VGCs. Motherfucking War Greymon. <laughs> <laughs> Thus, Digimon is better. <laughs> all right, here's another one for you. Would you rather be Gardevoir or Renamon? I'm going to have to go with Renamon because Mega Gardevoir is cool and all. But motherfucking Renamon evolves into... Oh, fuck. What was that name of the evolution? Uh, Cubimon? Uh, I don't know. I can check. I think it's Cubimon. Renamon Digivolution. Renamon. Uh... The better question is, would you rather be Renamon or uh, Vulpix? Of course it doesn't have the goddamn names in here. Renamon, that's the attack techniques. Evolves form Digitama is one of them. Um, uh, Niaromon, Pokemon, Pudimon, Tanamon, and Wanyamon. Whoa. Oh, wait, no, that's what it evolves from, not what it evolves to. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, Cubimon. You are correct. Okay. Would you rather be... Um... Would you rather be a red Power Ranger or a blue Power Ranger? Uh, blue. Okay. Also, uh, I like the only the only reason the only problem I have with Digimon is that every fucking thing's name ends with Mon. I don't actually have that big of a problem with that. I kind of wish it didn't. But... I actually really enjoy how they went with a more adult route in the uh, newer episodes of Digimon. Yeah, hell yeah. It's because Digimon. Have, that, have the you shit. have you watched them? No. They're fucking, oh my god, so goddamn gold. I believe it. Anyway, um, you got any more would you rathers before we get ready to go? Um, would you rather be, hmm, oh god, uh, would you rather be an elephant that had just watched its entire family get slaughtered, or a whale that just watched its entire herd get slaughtered? By what? I guess he's is... people. Um, a whale. Man, I, I'm. Just... You gotta choose the elephant, then you can stomp on some dudes. Yeah, but I, I, I feel like I have the chance to survive and get away as the whale. Are you kidding me? You don't have tusks as a whale. How or big, big feet? How big of a whale am I? All right, let's say you're a giant ass whale. Well, I mean, I'll fucking just wreck their boat. There you go. Now that's thinking with your dorsal fin. Yeah, I'll just fucking slam into them with my face. Eat it, bitches. Oh, that's kind of aggressive, actually. <laughs> Says the dude that's like, you can tusk and stomp on people. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> the hell, man. All right. Um, would you rather be a? Would you rather be a Spartan from Halo? Or a space marine. I'm gonna go with a Spartan from Halo. That life sucks a whole lot less than anything in 40k. Yeah. Would you rather be a Spartan from Halo or a Spartan from Sparta? Because that's where I thought you were gonna go with that. No, no. I I'm asking you now. Oh, okay. Uh, I would totally be a Spartan from Sparta. Yeah, you would. That would be fun. All right, seriously, though, we're, let, let, let's get the hell out of here now. Everybody, if you want to support this, patreon.com slash daily internet. Follow us on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. All of those are at iredditcast. Send us an email, feedback.iredit at gmail.com. Call and leave us a voicemail, 508-738-2278. Leave us a five-star review on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play. We go live Monday through Thursday at 10 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. That's it. All right, that's it, everybody. That's it. Uh, that is your 286th dose of the internet. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. Don't get, Don't get eliminated! eliminated! That's awesome and awful. Alright, sweet. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>